as you will see, things are a little all over the place today. We are in a garage because I just decided to try it in here because we put up this new um, backdrop. But as you can see, I am literally filming from a ladder because I accidentally left my tripod plate back in North Carolina. We just got back from shooting a documentary out there and I think that it is somewhere on a camera at a rental house. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel again. My name is Ryan Luth. I am a director and cinematographer based in Orange County, California, and I run a video production company called Luth Productions. Um, if you haven't been watching any of my videos, we basically make uh, lighting tutorials, behind the scenes videos, basically how to do filmmaking, and that's it. So today we're gonna be talking a little bit about something really exciting that has been in the works for ages. Um, it's kind of an older project that we shot a probably I think almost a year ago, close to today, was a underwater commercial. And it was really exciting. Um, something I've never done before. I've done a little bit of like surfing, surf filming and stuff like that, living here in California, but I'd never shot something specifically and lit it for underwater. Um, so this was a new challenge that I was excited to take on and I think the end result turned out pretty quick. We'll roll the clip here in a second. The mental health crisis is one unlike anything we've seen before. Millions directionless, losing hope. Jesus said he came to bind up the brokenhearted. Then he called us to do the same, to be the hand that pulls them out of their pain. This mental health crisis is the mission's moment of our decade. We can't miss it. So this was a commercial slash advertisement that we produced for a organization called Share the Struggle. They're a mental health organization that we do a lot of work with. It was a lot of fun. We got to have a lot of creative freedom with it to kind of advertise just an overall, basically a generic hype commercial video for their ministry and their organization, what they do. Um, and they tackle mental health issues. So this is something that I directed and DP'd. Um, and yeah, let's jump into some of the breakdown on it. So all this was shot just on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K, um, just mine here that I'm using right now. Uh, we didn't have a whole lot of budget for this, so we're just kind of shooting on what we had, but I think the end result turned out pretty good and we made do with what we had to work with. And so yeah, we were just using some Rokinon Cine Primes and I believe for the underwater stuff, we were using something else. I cannot remember off the top of my head what it is, um, but I can put the li little description right here of what lenses we were using. Um, Cause we were shooting obviously in an underwater housing. It was the, I think Nautitech or Naut Nautical something. Uh, underwater housing, so we just rented one off share grid, threw the black magic in there, did a bunch of tests with it to make sure it didn't leak. Um, but it was really cool because you like you have to pressurize it because it's a dive housing, so it's not just like a surf housing. You can actually take it deeper, which is what we needed because um, we were going in a 10 foot deep pool. So like I said, this was kind of my first time doing anything on a larger scale when it comes to water. Um, so it was really nice to have extra crew members. Um, I think we're at maybe like a five to seven, five to eight person crew. Normally I've just done like underwater surf housing, filming and stuff like that where it's just me and a housing and a camera. Um, so this was really exciting to be able to play around with the lights and have a lot of fun with the overall creative vision and what the final product looked like. In addition to directing and DPing, I also cam Hey, I also camera operated the underwater unit as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the lighting that we did here. As you can see in some of these clips, you see these really cool rays coming down through the water. I was hoping that would happen, but I wasn't sure it was going to, and I was pleasantly surprised when it did, because um, it really added to the overall feel of what we were going for. But it was really quite simple. What we did is just basically took um, two Leco lights, sitting right over here. Um, these bad boys. Ugh couple 750 uh, source for Leco lights. These are fantastic. They're just like what a you would see on an aperture light where you can put the little uh, Leco bones mount extender thing on it and you can shape the light. This is just 
a light that does that. You've probably seen these on stages and places like theaters and stuff, but we use them in film too. So we had two of those and those were just shining down into the pool. Um, we kind of had to maneuver them so they're hitting like right in the middle of the bottom of the 10 foot deep pool because that's where we wanted our subject to kind of be sitting and then swimming around in that area. And we didn't have a whole lot of room to work with. It was actually kind of a smaller space pool wise. Um, so I was only able to go back that much farther, but it worked really well. We just basically shaped those um, so that they were two beams of light just coming right down into the pool. And that's kind of how we got those rays because obviously there's particles in the water and stuff um, and it creates those rays. And then I think we had a little bit of fill um, just from an aperture 300D that we just had at daylight and we're just shining that in on the camera side of the pool just to add a little bit of fill and get some of that like daylight and tungsten balance because the lights coming in for the Lecos we just left is just straight tungsten. What was super important with this location was to make sure we had a location scout beforehand. So Lena and I went down about a week earlier to check out the location. It was down somewhere in San Diego because obviously if we're going down there, we were thinking maybe we need to get a generator. We're not sure how we're gonna power these lights, how close are outlets, is there any outlets, how we're gonna make this work and is this pool even exactly what we're looking for. We went down there and we figured out that the outlets were about about, I think about a hundred feet away from the pool. Um, and obviously since we're using, um, we're going off of someone's house power, we weren't gonna bring a generator with us. We need to make sure that we don't run into any issues with filming around water, which is why you need something called GFCIs. And a GFCI basically is just a ground fault circuit interrupter, something like that that basically if anything uh, were to fall in the pool or got wet on it, it would trip the circuit so that you wouldn't like destroy or electrocute anything back at the main power source. Just these things, I just picked them up from Home Depot. I think they're about like maybe 30 bucks each or something like that. Um, but you just basically go one end to the other and they just run from like, so you'd have like your light here and it would go to here and then you'd run the rest of your cabling off of there. Um, and it's like the same kind of thing that you'd see in your bathroom that has outlets like this, same same idea. But you gotta make sure you're using uh, GFCIs when you're filming around water with lights and, electric, uh, and electricity and equipment because if anything were to go wrong, people can get electrocuted and that is the last thing you want on your hands. On the topic of safety, one of the other things we had to make sure that we had on set was a lifeguard. This was super important because Lena was actually the one, um, well, not only being my wife, um, but she was acting in it. And even just in general, having people in pools and having to like go down to the bottom of a pool and stay down there and hold their breath and film in water, like you can get tired very quickly, especially when you're in 10 feet deep of water, right? So we had a lifeguard there to make sure that he was just keeping it, he was awesome. He's a buddy of mine. He was just keeping an eye on Lena and myself and anyone that was around working in the water. Um, swimming and making sure that if we started looking like we were tired, they'd pull us out and we'd take a break because we're not necessarily thinking about those things when we're filming and accidents can happen. So that was really important to make sure we had that. Yeah, so some of the challenges that we kind of faced doing this, obviously anything around water takes like three times as long because you're working in an environment that you're not normally used to. We don't normally film in water when we're filming things. so. Some of the challenges I faced at the beginning was keeping myself um, down at the bottom of the pool. Obviously, we have air in our lungs and we can let air out of our lungs to let ourselves sink down, but I had to stay down there for a, a little bit of a longer time. So, you can't see the belt, but these are the weights. Um, we didn't actually use these at the time. I think I had just like a little like, uh, like curling weight that I tied around a belt that the gaffer gave me and I just strapped it around my waist and it just kind of whew, sunk me down to the bottom. But now I have a dive belt with proper weights and stuff that I can use when I do this stuff in the future and I can properly weigh myself for this kind of work. But this was super important because had I not had this, I would keep floating up to the surface and Lena would keep floating up to the surface and we would just never be able to get the shots that we wanted. So she had a weight as well too. We had a weight tied to a string that she would like hold on to to help her sink down and then we pull the weight out so it wouldn't be in the shot. That's why we had the rope on it. And then she would just try and keep herself down there as long as she could while we grabbed the shots. And then the lifeguard would come in and help her swim back up to the surface because she had this big dress on and that could be dangerous if you're in water and it's hard to move around. So we had to make sure that things were kept safe with that. One of the other things that was really important that we had to make this successful and make our shots turn out how we were hoping 
um, was this brilliant idea our gaffer had to put a rope um, a, across the pool for something for us to hang on to um, as basically like a big giant handle that we could swim up and grab onto. So he just strung it from a tree to another tree, kept it really tight. Um, and that way when we came up, there wasn't like, we weren't struggling to find like a pool floaty or anything like that. It was just like, boop, there's something we can just grab onto and just hang on to it. Also on that note, we had a hot tub, which was amazing because we got kind of chilly because we were shooting in the nighttime. Um, and that just helped our actors and myself warm up a little bit in between takes if we needed to so we didn't get hypothermia or something crazy like that. Last kind of shots that made this commercial uh, really cool was the ending crane shots that we used. We had a jib that we had to extend over the water obviously to get that shot where they come up out of the pool and it's over top of them because um, we didn't really know how else we were gonna do that. So we just had a jib, we brought a jib in and boomed that over and then we kind of just like boomed up as they came out of the water, which was really cool. Um, and then use that for the ending like shots as well too. So lighting wise on that, we flipped some things around and we just kicked a Leco, I think through a big five in one reflector. We were on a bit of a time crunch at this point after shooting all the underwater stuff. So we had to kind of like pick up the pace and just light it very quickly, but I think it turned out pretty good. And then in addition to that, some of the extra shots that you'll see in the commercial um, were some of these shots on the beach. That was just a morning thing that Lena and I quick drove down to a beach near our house. Um, I've got a little Pavo tube Nan light thing, turned it red. It's kind of like this lightsaber thing. It's basically supposed to be like her holding this like emergency flare or whatever you want to call it. She's like crying out for help. Um, so we just ran down to the beach. I just brought my camera with me, just handheld at all those shots and um, shot it early in the morning on a cloudy day. Um, to get that like moody-ish kind of feel to it. Other shots that you'll see were shot at our producer's house. These were pickups that we did later on. We were just realizing that we needed um, more than just underwater shots and the beach shots to convey the overall vibe that we were going for and convey the message properly for the commercial. Um, so we shot some stuff at our producer's house. That was literally just a two light setup. I brought in 300D with a 60 inch dome use that as my key light, and then just a little one by one LED panel with a softbox on it for a backlight. So it was just two point lighting, very quick shoot. And that was all just uh, tripod and handheld. So yeah, all in all, that was our um, three day shoot for a 60 second commercial. So that's all I have for today. Thank you again for watching. Um, as always, hit that subscribe button, leave a comment, leave a like, um, consider following me on Instagram. Uh, appreciate your guys' support and I will catch you on the next one.